What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. And today we are looking ahead to the 164 card, uh, which is a very, very interesting card. Goes down uh, in Singapore on, uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, another double offering from one championship. They have their fifth Amazon card as well, uh, which you'll be able to see the preview for over on Sherdog.com and on our YouTube as well. A very, very good card. Renee the Ritter uh, on that card, as well as the debut of Roberto Soldic, which should be, oh, it should be really, really good. That's, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I've, say, I, I've said this once, and I think I'll probably say it a few times, but to me, that's the fight I'm most excited about in one championship. This year, probably, <laughs> you know, probably uh, out of all the fight, even the, the championship fights, Roberto Saldic, um is is so brilliant, is such a good fighter, such a good sh- sign-in that I think everyone in the world of mixed martial arts wanted to see. And he's taking on Murad Ramazanov, which is going to be a very, very good fight as well. But as I said, I have a breakdown of that uh, on the Sherdog YouTube today. I'm here to look at uh, 1, 164. And one thing I actually wanted to quickly say before we get into the fight, um, I think mostly because the strawweight world title fight is headlining this card. And... It just kind of brings to the fore, I think, what one championship offer. Because I saw in the last week or so, um, Chachery was talking about one championship. I mean, maybe more than the last week, but he was talking about one championship being the number two destination in the world and obviously number one in their area. Um, I think Bellator and, and uh, Scott Coker have said similar things. And um, I think is it Peter Murray is his name from PFL said, by all metrics, they're number two in the world. So, there's a real battle going on for that. And, you know, you, you can't leave out the likes of KSW. You can't leave out the likes of Cage Warriors as well, who do absolutely phenomenal work in, in Europe. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure maybe other people have put their hand up as well for, for the number two. The thing about it is, though, if you ask someone now who's the number two promotion in the world, you, I, th- I actually think for the first time in probably maybe ever, you will actually get a couple of different answers. Like some people will prefer PFL the way they do it. Some people prefer Bellator. Some people will prefer one championship. A lot of people I know on my side of the world would, wouldn't hesitate in saying cage wires. I know a lot of people who watch Polish and Macy all the time wouldn't hesitate in saying KSW. But the fact that, and you know, maybe there's a, bi- a bit of bias to those two, but the other, the other three, I don't think there necessarily is. I, th- I think, I, I think there's a genuine battle there. Like who, would you rather have at the top of your division? Who would, what stars would you rather? Would you rather have Kayla Harrison? Would you rather have Angela Lee? You know, would you rather have Fabian Edwards or Nimkov or whoever it might be? Would you rather have Christian Lee? Would you rather have Brendan Lachnan? Would you rather have Rory McDonald? There, there's a lot of different fighters in a lot of different promotions at the moment that are very very good and make them stand out and when I say the phrase stand out there I really mean that and the strawweight world championship fight here is something that really makes one championship uh, stand out the, the men's strawweight obviously do we women's strawweight in, in uh, a lot of um, a lot of different places in the world but the men's strawweight it's something different you know one championship do obviously a lot different because they have Muay Thai and, and grappling and kickboxing and all of that as well but they have different divisions you know uh, PFL have a different division as well with the lightweight women's uh, division. They do, uh, you know, the playoffs. They do it the way they do it. It is different. Bellator, I think, look, Bellator are more like the UFC, but what they have done really, really well over the last seven or eight years is sign the young talent. Like, they've got the Picos. They've got the Fabian Edwards. They've got the James Gallers. They've got all, uh, you know, AJ McKees. They've got all that young talent coming up. And it's very, very hard you know, it's very, very hard for people to overtake that when Bellator have a lot of that and they've done a great, great job of that. So I think all in all, that's exciting times for the world of mixed martial arts. It really, really is. When, you know, someone like Saldish, as I mentioned, comes up for grabs, the, the UFC wants him. Bellator obviously wants him. One championship want him. I'm sure KSW wanted to keep him. Yet he goes to one championship. You know, there are so many options, so many different ways to go. Mansoir Bonnois, he goes to Bellator. You know, Bo Nickel goes to the UFC. Mamet Khaledov stays in, in KSW. And it's, 
you know, where will Paul Hughes go? Will he have another fight in cage, uh, cage wires? Will he fight uh, for the UFC? Will he go there next? Will Bellator try to swoop in? It's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting times in the world of mixed martial arts at the moment. And um, it's great because, like, I talk a lot about uh, about a lot of these Bellator, PFL, one championship cards, and it's very exciting to do another thing. So today I want to talk about that one championship card, and I want to talk, firstly, about the, the strawweight title. As I said again, something very, very different. Uh, the champion Joshua pa- uh, Pacquiao was taking on Jared Brooks coming over from America who's looked very very impressive in his last few fights uh, over in case uh, in a uh, one championship even um, first to Pacquiao though <laughs> and it's funny we're talking about uh, we're, we're talking about strawweight here and my first uh, the first thing I, I, I noticed when watching him is he fights a lot slower than you would expect for, for someone who's 115 pounds you know up to obviously with the, the different weight cuts in one championship 125 pounds each so we, we you know we've obviously talked about that before uh but very powerful for that weight very very powerful for that weight he's a steady smart accurate pace you know sometimes there's a thing that happened in the lower the very low weight classes i think from i think it was a function of cruz dillashaw and Dimitri shanson mostly especially at the lowest weight classes was was people kind of tried to fight fast. You know, you needed to be John Dalton, you needed to, to be Demetrius, you needed to be fast to have a chance against other people of that size with a great skill set. And that's not always the case. You know, Pascio has showed that he can fight at a more steady pace and it can work for him too. And it absolutely does. Now, he's not slow. When he tries to fight fast... He can fight fast, but he chooses not to. He chooses to fight at that more steady pace. And it works very, very well for him. It works really, really, really well for him. Um, he throws kicks that people don't see coming. Loves Lovely spinning kicks. He always throws in twos. Always throws in twos. No, okay, at least twos, I should say. And the right hand is the second shot every time. So he switches the lead. He might throw the left hook followed by the right hand. He might throw the jab, followed by the right hand. He might throw a leg kick inside, followed by the right hand. He might throw an outside leg kick, followed by the right hand. There was one lovely shot. Uh, he, he threw a body kick with his left leg, and then he followed it right over with a big hook and right hand. And it was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. This guy is, he's brilliant. I love watching him. Really, really good. My sort of fighter, you know. Um, he jabs well as well, which is Great to set up that right hand, obviously. Uh, jabs to the body, which we don't see loads in mixed martial arts there. And do you know what he does do? I, I talked about pace. I talked about quickness. When he does hit someone, when he does hurt someone, he puts on a massive pace then. And he doesn't let you stop. He really, really doesn't. The one thing going back to maybe slightly older fights, I think pressure is a thing he loves to put on, but he doesn't like to take on. So when he gets pressured, he wrestles. That's what I've seen. Now, in a couple of those fights, he was fighting high-level kickboxers, and of course, you're going to wrestle against him. But I think that's something just to note here, because Jared Brooks will be putting on the pressure. We'll talk about Jared in a second, but uh, Pascal is very, very strong in a clinch. Um, very good body lock takedowns. Good control, good ground and pound, but he is definitely more of a striker, I would say. Um, Brooks, then, is a wrestler, and he's... All wrestler, um, very fast to enter the range. He tries to create uh, create a transition. I would say if you were to say the the mo the the first uh, object of Jared Brooks every time he fights to me is to create a transition and win that transition, and that's where he's best at. He's brilliant at winning transitions. Absolutely expert at it. He slides around to the back. Um, he'll take your back quicker than you even know he's taking your back. Does like he's the sort of guy who travels at such speed after that transition, you know, the, the, obviously the, the size and the weight helps, that you don't even know it. He's a done before it happens. And it's it's superb. He's absolutely superb. A very good BJJ when the fight gets to the ground. Um on the feet though, he is you know, some people say circling, some people say staying active on the outside. With Brooks, I think it's fair to say he runs away on the feet because <laughs> he just does. He sprints around the outside of that cage. Um, but then he sprints in for takedowns as well. If he wants to close that distance, he will close that distance very, very quickly. And he'll either be very, very far away from you or he'll be on top of you. 
um, big slams, stronger than most of that weight class. You know, he doesn't look like a strawweight. You know, so you, I, I watched a lot of strawweight fights, obviously preparing for this, the old Pasha fights and old Brooks fights, and the guys they're fighting at, you know, even Pasha himself and, and others, they look small. You know, 115 pounders are going to be small guys. But Brooks, he, he's not, obviously, you know, he's not me or he's not, you know, Brandon Vera or anything like that, but he doesn't look tiny. And I think that really, really helps him. And he's so much stronger than a lot of these guys. It's it's very good. Um, the one thing I will say about his striking, he hits very hard and he will throw counters if you approach him, but not, not really much helps. Um, he fires in combinations to try to get to the wrestling. One might land. And if one does land, he can knock you out. But he's the sort of guy that if he does knock you out, it's pure luck. I'll put it that way. It's pure luck because all he wants to do with those hands is get into that transition, get the fight to the ground and win there. Now, it's not pure luck because, I just got tricked myself, because he does it on purpose to tr- create that transition to get the fight to the ground where he wants to do it. So it's a smart thing to do, you know. Maybe he'll take a couple of shots to get in there, but at, at 115, sometimes you can take those shots to get in there to win you the fight. Is that a good strategy? It very well is for Brooks. It works very, very well for him. Um... But as I said, he can land one, but doesn't land it very, very often. Um, I look, he's open for strikes as well because because of the way he strikes, he leaves himself open for strikes and it's very, very dangerous. Now, who's going to win this fight uh, is the next question we, we have to answer here. And it to me is uh, your old school wrestler versus striker matchup. If Brooks can get across the cage and take him down, I think he'll win. If he can't, if Pasio can keep it on the feet, I think Pasio will win. Um, but I, 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 like I, I again, I, I think this is the start of fight where Pasio is a better, well-rounded, all-around fighter than Brooks. But Brooks's wrestling is just too strong, in my opinion. I think he'll be able to take Pasio down. I think he won't give him a chance, and I think that pressure that Pasio does not like will be an issue because what did I say he likes to do when someone pressures him? He likes to wrestle. If he wrestles against Brooks, he's, it's not good for him. It really, really is not good for him. Um, so he's going to have to find a new way of fighting off the back foot, initially at least, because Brooks will run across and he will try to take him down. He has to jab away. Don't throw any kicks because Brooks catches a kick and he will put you down. Don't throw him that many kicks. Maybe a few high kicks if you can get him snapped quick and get him back. But I wouldn't be throwing any leg kicks, any body kicks, as Brooks will catch on to him. You need to jab your way out of it. You need to throw big body shots. One, two, you know, throw your two shots, absolutely. And get away, get away, get away until Brooks' pace slows down and then start fighting your fight. But if Passio comes out immediately and starts to fight his own fight and doesn't react to Brooks' fight or reacts with wrestling, I think he, he's lost the fight already. And... That is a very, 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 very difficult thing to ask of anyone, even a high-level fighter like Pascio. Um Now, maybe he'll outclass him. And I actually think, you know, I, I, I thinking about it more, I think there's actually a great chance he does outclass him. To me, this is a very close 50-50 fight. I'll be interested to see when the betting lines come out. Obviously, I have the betting show as well this week. They're usually later in the week, but we'd be, I'd be interested to see it. I Like, I think... I, I, I think... Brooks should be at maybe a minus 200 favorite here. If he's if he's anything, you know, lower than that, he'll definitely be one of my bets for this week. But if Pascio is anything more than that, I could see him being, you know, being a flyer bet for the week as well because I do not think he's without a chance here. I really, really don't think he's without a chance. But having said that, I'm going for Jared Brooks. I think his wrestling will just be too strong. Um, as I said, I, I'll just I'll talk mostly and break down mostly the the MMA fights, uh, but I'll mention the other fights as well. There's one flyweight Mai Tai World Grand Prix Championship finale on. Uh, Pampayak uh, is fighting against Superlek. You know, I'm not the biggest Mai Tai aficionado in the world, but even I know those two names. <laughs> and um, mm. that I, I watched both of their semifinals, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of months back, and they were both very, very exciting, both of it hate very hard, so that's definitely one uh, that the, uh, the Mai Tai uh, enthusiasts will be tuning into, but uh, the next MMA fight is is one that the um, the heavyweight MMA 
aficionados will be, <laughs> will be tuning into because it's Brandon Vera versus Amir uh, Ali Akbari. Now, we go from maybe the fastest fight in the world to possibly the slowest. And it's not that, uh, you know, that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're a heavyweight, you're going to be fast. If you're a 115 or you're going to be slow. But um, I remember the last time we talked about Ali Akbari, I talked about his speed. Now, watched his last fight and he actually looked against Sorelli a lot quicker, to be honest. Uh, but Brandon Vera has gone from a fighter, you know, who in his young days, obviously he was in the UFC and he was talking about being um, a double champion and all that. Look, he's a lot older now, but the speed is one thing that really has not stayed with him. Um, and Ali Akbari, as I said, not the fastest fighter in the world. So it's interesting to see how that actually works out here. Because... I would say in their la- in their most recent fights when it's gone badly from it has been because of speed even in parts of fights, and when there isn't a massive advantage there, maybe it allows them to do what they want to do a little bit better. Now Brandon Vera, watch his last couple of fights, he still jabs very well, he switches stances, as I said, a lot slower now than he once was, um, and the biggest issue with him being a bit slower is he just can't get away from the strikes of his opponents. He can still throw his shots he can still land his shots but it's avoiding the shots is a big issue um he's all boxing um and i think that is a little bit of an issue for him because when it's all boxing it becomes a little bit predictable doesn't have the best take down defense in the world anymore which i think will be a big issue against amir aliak barry you look at aliak barry he seems to have put on a lot of size in the last few fights um and as I said, I thought he slowed down. He was better when he was smaller. And maybe maybe for that last fight against uh, against Sorelli, he took off a little bit of the size and he got a little bit faster again. I think it's something he definitely noticed, but he fought that way as well. Now, he's a wrestler. Um, not the best striker in the world, but can hit hard. As I said last time out, his striking looked a lot better. When he gets the fight to the ground, he likes to pass. He likes to attack. He likes to get to the crucifix. The crucifix position absolutely smashed Sorelli uh, wide open for strike. Look, he, he smashed Sorelli wide open, but he's also wide open for strikes himself. He'll swing, he'll go at you. So if Brandon Vera can drag him in to a swang and banging match, I think Ali Akbari actually will go for that, to be honest. So <laughs> Vera needs to do that from the start, I think. I think you really, because the best way, the, the way Vera is going to win this fight is if he jabs him up, hits him with a few big shots and knocks him out. Now, that might also get him knocked out. That might get him taken down and he loses as well. But I think he's going to lose if he doesn't do that. So he might as well do that, you know? And Ali Akbari is a willing dance partner if you try to draw him into that matchup. Now, if you fight a more honest, even pace, uh, honest is the wrong word, but a more even pace, um, he will go for a takedown. And he will get you down because he's very, very strong. A very, very good wrestler. Very, very strong wrestler. So when he gets the fight to the ground, he's, a, you know, devastating. Really, really devastating and will open you up. You know, Mauro Sorelli, a very, very good fighter. I have great respect for Sorelli. He's been around for years and years and years. And uh, Amir Ali Akbari made, you know, made him look ordinary when, when the fight went to the ground. So the key here for Ali Akbari early is probably just to take Vera down if we're being honest. The key for Vera is to not get taken down. The best way to do that, I think, is to draw him into a firefight. If you jab him up and all, you're just going to draw him into a takedown. So, um, if he can draw him into a firefight, you know, Vera, as I said, he's not as fast as he once was, but I, he probably still has the speed on Ali Ali uh, on Amir Ali Akbari, sorry. Um, and it, 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 you know, it's, it's a fight that because of the, the way both of them are, I think it could, it could be fun <laughs> if they just go out and swang. But I look, here's my prediction for the fight. My prediction is Vera actually, do, he does that, but not initially. I think he'll jab up, jab up. He will get taken down. He'll end up getting back and to the feet and then he'll tr- start throwing. But I think once he gets taken down after that, he'll tire and Ali Akbar, he'll probably get the finish. Um, I think Ali Akbar will get him out of there in the first or second round. I think it'll be you know, maybe a submission, but probably ground a pound on the ground. Um, I, I would fancy Ali Akbari in a big way to win this fight. Vera has a chance, absolutely, but definitely Ali Akbari for me in this one. We'll move on and we'll talk about a, a flyweight MMA fight then. Um, 
Jehe Ustakwio uh, is fighting against uh, Hu Yang. Uh, Jehe is just very, 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 very exciting fighter. He fights out of Team Lakai, wears those red shorts. I love uh, every time I see those red shorts now, I'm checking it up. I was like, are they Team Lakai? They are. Oh, very good. I know what way they're going to fight. No need, no need to watch anymore, but now I do. And I watched uh, a good few of his fights. And you know what? Very, very ex- exciting fighter. Big kicks, leg kicks, wheel kicks, low kicks, high kicks, the whole lot, side kicks, everything. Very, very low hands. I would say he doesn't have the best take down of Vince in the world. Fights at a controlled pace, though, for a guy who kicks a lot. Um, dips forward with the right hand. Uh, a wushu fighter. Uh, but he can wrestle, too. You know, I, I, I think one thing I, I said about him, he always seems to fight about 10 miles an hour too slow. And it might be a good thing because... I'm sure it's something they've worked in the gym where you're looking at him or finding a flyweight. And as I said earlier on, speed isn't everything. Maybe he was fighting a little bit too fast, but it just it just feels to me like he's the type of fighter that has to like count to three before he does something, if you get me. And maybe that's because he never counted to three before and it was all rushed and it was too rushed. I, I can see that. But maybe maybe he hasn't just found that perfect pace for himself yet. Um... As I said, like I've written here in my notes, it might be a good thing or it might be a bad thing, but I just feel like he has a little bit more to give. Now, having said that, a very, very good fighter. All the things I said there about him, he's an ex-champion. He can do it all. Lovely lead uppercut, lovely lead hook. Um, But it definitely does seem like he's trying to fight a more orthodox way. You know, obviously he came from that wushu background with the, the big kickboxing and all of that. And we do see some of it coming out with the wheel kicks and all, but it definitely does seem like it's a slower pace, a more even pace, a more technical output, which we will see in the long run if it pays off for Jay. I'm, you know, I, I like the madness. <laughs> I'll be honest, I like the madness. And I'm not the biggest fan of that, but if it works for him, it works for him. Now, Hu Young, Young on the other side... He sits low and ready to throw. He really does. He dips down. You know, you see some fighters. Um, what's the fight? Um, oh, Jesus. Gilbert Melendez against Diego Sanchez. I can all I remember in that fight is Gilbert just dipping down and just throwing those big shots. That's the way Young fights all the time. Just sits low and throws. Great chin. An absolutely brilliant chin. Lovely leg kicks. Lovely oblique kick. Uh, as well, one of my favorite things he does. But he just throws, like, this card, these two cards, I think, very, very, uh, um, what was I going to say, full with leg kicks. He, uh, like, Young f- absolutely spams leg kicks. It's all big movements with him. All one shot. Bombs in with the right hand um, against very, very good strikers. Isn't one bit afraid. Um... And he, like, the one issue for him, though, is he's wrestling, you know. And I, I think it's it's one of those things where it's, if he can get taken down, he's a very, very hard time getting back up. And he's a very, very hard time not leaving him in a, not leaving himself in a position where he does get taken down. When you throw us at that many kicks, it's always an issue. He's always backing up, too. You know, he always seems to be moving and I'm not sure. Okay, it's flyweight and you can, your cardio often lasts better at the lower weight classes, but I'm not sure if it, he can keep that cardio going for that long of a time against someone like Jehu who fights a little bit of a more even pace, as I was mentioning earlier. I think that is definitely an issue for him and I definitely think it's something in this fight that could cause him an issue. Now, what do I think is going to happen here? I think this is going to be a kickboxing match. I really, really do. And you know what? I'm not sure who is better. Um, it's going to be a kicking match. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I would say that if J.H. ups that pace because he's fighting against a guy who's not the greatest wrestler in the world and I don't think he's going to wrestle him, uh, it could really, really benefit him. Now, having said that, who young can wrestle? And he, he's not the he's not the best offensive uh, defensive wrestler in the world, but he can offensively wrestle. And I could see him going for a takedown here, but I do think it'll be a kickboxing match. Now, famous last words, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I, do you know what? I, I'm going to go with Jay in this one, but I think it'll be a very very interesting one. I think it'll be a very very good fight. Um, couple more fights to go. Um, bantamweight MMA. We have Jeremy Pascal uh, against. 
uh, Pakatau even against Tyle Tang. Uh, Jeremy throws hands. That's the first thing you need to say about him. Rushes forward. Or else he meets pressure immediately. Seems like uh, he has a short reach because he reaches in with those shots. He reminds me of uh, what's the other lad we had we had in the card earlier. I mean, actually, I think it might be on the on the other card even. Uh, uh, Day Sung Park, yeah, uh, on on the uh, on the Amazon card. Just he almost shortens himself the way he fights. Very active lead hand. Very very open to the body though because of that. Uh, the, the kind of the high guard. Um. The short jab, though, again, he always gives the opponents chances. He throws those long windmill power right hands, lovely leg kicks, has very good entries, very good takedowns, does everything with speed, very good at passing when the fight gets to the ground and takes the back very well as well. The one thing I would say about Jeremy, he's great when he mixes things up. When he does the same thing over and over, it, it's an issue, but he is good at mixing things up and it makes him a very good fighter. Uh, for Tyle Tang, you'll notice him, right? Put on any of his fights for the first 30 seconds and you just see him dipping. He's like he's like this, just dipping constant. <laughs> he's like a little frog or something. Just dipping up and down and up and down always. Um But he with that being said, he's a good fighter. He has very, very good knees in the clinch, very strong in the clinch, very happy to get the fight to the ground and be happy on top. Um punches on the break reminds me a little bit of Petter Yan the way he punches on the break. Really uh fast, straight right hand, and just the right hand. No jabs much. Always leads with that right hand, does Tile Tank. Always throws the right hand as his lead. Um, no, sometimes he throws the left hook, but rarely jabs. He switched, <laughs> rarely jabs from Orthodox, but when he switches to Southpaw, then he jabs with the right hand. He reminds me of OSP. He's one handed. Now, it's OSP's left hand, isn't it, if I'm not mistaken? He's the other way around. He only throws his right hand <laughs> straight. OSP never jabs. Unless he's jabbing with that one hand, and he throws the other other way, it's the backhand, and it's the same here for Tyle Tong. He does get taken down a lot. Um, I here's the thing I say about him: very good offensive fighter, bad defensive fighter, bad defensively wrestling, bad defensively striking, and it's a big issue for him. Um, I think. It's very good matchmaking here. I think these lads are very well matched. They both have issues while both being good fighters at the same time. I can see Tail Tang kind of walking in to a, a Passio right hand and maybe getting knocked out. I'd be interested to see what the betting is here. Maybe I'm a little off with this one. I just think it's going to be very close. Uh, back to draw on this one, lads. I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go for Passio, but uh, maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll change my pick uh, next week when the betting uh, comes out. Right. We have a few um, Mai Tai fights on it here as well. Tagir Kaladov versus uh, Korofei Tar. Uh, and then Lara Fernandez against Ban Chemek uh, in the Atomweight Mai Tai. Uh, but the last two MMA fights, I, 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 leave the, I leave the big one for last, and we'll be talking about that last. Um, Jinilin Olsim versus Mingbo. Mingbo is one of my favorite people to watch in one championship. Lovely jab. Lovely outside and inside leg kick. Very patient. Uh, people are slow to strike with her, so she just picks them off from the outside. Literally just there, all right, you're done to strike me, grand. Boom, 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 boom. 20 shots. Here's here's 20 outside leg kicks for you. Here's 20 jabs for you. Grand, don't strike with me. Fine, perfect. Stay there. And it's really, really good. It really builds her into the fight. She didn't. She starts throwing harder. Lovely double jab. And she throws this curled right hand behind it. I think Miss Chilson very, well, very uh, brilliantly described it as. Brilliant defensively as Mingbo. Hard to beat. Good wrestling and grappling until a point. I think she's a very good wrestler offensively. Very good wrestler defensively until a point. Until she meets someone very good. Until she meets someone who can pull her down. Meet someone who's stronger than her. But you have to be very, very good. <coughs> In my opinion, you have to be very technical and very brave to beat Mingbo. And if you're not, you won't beat her. Um, Oslim, you know, she is. She is. She loves to throw high and low off both feet. God, she's so talented. Just so talented. Uh, keeps that right hand just stuck to her face all the time. And you can see why. Because when she drops it, she gets hit. Uh, looks like it's all striking with her. But then she just dips in for a lovely takedown. Double legs them and you're like, oh wait, she's a wrestler. So she's very, very well-rounded. Strong, athletic, fast brilliant jab the one issue she has she's like the exact opposite to most people right most fighters they have a lovely right hand and then they have maybe issues everywhere else 
She's brilliant everywhere, but her right hand, she kind of falls over on it. She looks like she has everything but that. Now, maybe it's improved since, and obviously, you know, you can't help but see it when you go back and watch her fights. Um, but other than that, a very, very good fighter. She likes it on the ground. Way better when she's attacking. Um, when she's countering, she gets hit so often, and a lot of times because of that right hand, she needs to be forced. She needs to be aggressive. She needs to land her shots which is a dangerous thing to do against Ming Bo, as I just explained. No one likes to strike with her because her striking is so good. I would suggest being offensive with the wrestling, trying to pull Ming Bo to the ground, but Ming Bo is good wrestling as well. You have to be, as I said, you have to be very, very, very good to beat her. Is awesome that this is a big step up for her um, in her career, and I think it'll show. So I, I, I really like Awesome's game. I really, really like Awesome's game. I'm going to go with her. I'm gonna. I, she's going to be my pick, but... Uh, just because I like her game, just because I I I, I rate it. Uh, but uh, Ming Bo, you know, me, I think Ming Bo will probably be the favorite for that fight. If I, if I'm uh, if I've uh, you know, past this prologue maybe. Right, my favorite fight in these two cards is the last one I'll talk about. Jasur Miz Magomedov against Rugrug Umar Khan. Umar Khan is back, my guy. What a uh, what a fighter! Looked so good last time out. Um, like he striking was on point, throwing a nice jab, fighting at a slower pace, stopped the wrestling of the European champion wrestler. Looked like he had three minutes of tiring wrestling to fight against, and he did not gas. His cardio held up, got back up, went back to the jab, looked good at it, looked relaxed. Fought a little bit like Yoel Romero, you know, wait, 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 and explode. You don't, you don't need to explode for five full minutes. You only need to explode for five seconds. And you can very well win that fight through shots when he needed to throw him in that fight. And there's no point looking at Rogue Rogue any of his other fights. You only have to look at the last one because he's a completely different fighter. Now, look at the other ones to see what he can do when he does explode. And I think he actually needs to do a little bit more. But when he gets more control over his cardio and more confidence in it, I think he will do that more. He's on the way to becoming a very good fighter. A very, very good fighter. And what stands in his way, Jasur, is to me not a great fighter. Uh, not that athletic. Um, as a, like I said with Mingbo good take down defense up until a point against the cage v- just take him down easily in the middle of the cage to be honest in a couple of fights I saw and I think Umar Khan if he's smart he will do that um, he has a good sprawl does uh, Jasur and when he's there in one championship he throws knees he won one of his fights he got beaten for f- you know two rounds and four minutes and then in the last well maybe maybe, maybe a little bit less than that but in the last two minutes, two and a half minutes, he won the fight on a one championship scoring system because he threw so many knees in there. Very, very tall. He's a good kickboxer when he can do it, kind of, kind of. Uh, he does chase lads around. He has power in the right, but he actually rarely lands it. Uh, I think Rogro is going to dominate this one. Look, if he strikes with, with Jasur and he lets him lead and he lets him throw that jab and he lets him throw the right hand, he could land it eventually on Rogro. But if he's smart, if he wrestles in this fight, Jasur is there for the taking and quick, I think. So for me, Rug Rug is going to win this one and it's going to be a highlight reel win for Rug Rug, in my opinion. Right, I will leave it there. A lot of fights this weekend, a lot of very good fights, some great stuff for one championship and I'm looking forward to uh, to watching it all. I'll leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com and I'll see you all next time.